So what I've done is I've copy pasted everything from the previous section in this new file. But in addition to it, I've also added a little bit more code as well. Okay, so let's look at what we're doing step by step. So, so far, we have the user prompt as well as the relevant chunks that are getting generated based on this question. So the first thing that I'm going to do is very simple. First, I'm preparing a combined prompt to the LLM saying, here are some documents that might help answer this question. So here we can put the actual user question, which in this case is where is Dracula's castle located? So we provide the prompt. Now we need to provide all of the relevant chunk text. If you remember, we shortlist the top three chunks and we're providing that here as well by joining these docs together. Very simple. And to make sure it works, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to say, please provide a rough answer based only on the provided documents. If the answer is not found in the documents, respond with, I'm not sure. So we're doing this so that the LLM only answers the question from the chunk texts provided. Now we're instantiating the model. So we've done this several times now. We're defining the messages array with the system message as a simple, you are a helpful assistant. And finally, we are going to invoke it and print the result. Let's actually comment this out so that we are only interested in the content. So let's actually run this file and give it a few seconds. And we have the final result and let's see what it says. Based on the provided documents, Dracula's castle is located in the extreme east of Transylvania, just on the borders of Transylvania, Moldavia and Bukovina. In the midst of the Carpathian Mountains, the post town named by Count Dracula is Bistritz, right? <laughs> I can't uh, pronounce it either. How amazing is that, right? The LLM is able to identify this based on all this data that was present in the chunks. So let me show you. Let's copy this word Bistritz and search for this and you can see it shows up in multiple places in the chunks, right? Just how amazing is that? Let me ask another question as well. So let's say, mm, okay, so we all know that the Dracula hates garlic, right? So let's ask that question. What does Dracula fear the most? So now let's clear the terminal and now let's run this file. Okay, so we have the response. Let us see what it says. It says the Dracula fears a lot of things. He cannot enter places unless invited. Does not like garlic, wow, right? It gives the answer and it's given a lot of other things that we even did not know. Let's actually confirm if the LLM gave this answer based on the chunks we sent it. So I'm going to copy this word garlic and search for it. Uh, scroll up and you can see this is mentioned several times in the chunks. How amazing is that, right? See, it says he is afflicted by garlic. He also does not like crucifixes. So if I scroll down all the way, you can see that the LLM also assures us that it only took all of this based on the provided documents. So this way, we know it didn't go into its own knowledge or do an internet search. Uh, so in your own projects, instead of doing it with books, you can put in your private data that the LLM has no way of knowing and give it additional knowledge and chat with it. And we can even take it one step further. So instead of it being a one-off question, you can build it in such a way that we can have a to and fro conversation as well. Okay, so if you remember, we already did that in the chat models module and you can implement the same thing here. And with that said, we've completed our deep dive into rags. Take a moment to appreciate, you know, how far we've come. You are currently in the top 5% of developers who can build rag systems and, uh, you know, build these intelligent retrieval systems using Langchain, right? So you can now, you know, build intelligent document retrieval systems, create context aware conversational AI, connect AI to your private data, and even integrate web crawling abilities, right? So if you're finding value in this journey, please don't forget to, you know, click the subscribe button because it really helps the channel grow. But at the same time, I can, you know, it gives me more incentive to make more advanced uh, AI uh, related content, right? Uh, but yeah, guys, we're not done yet. Uh, up next, we're going to dive into the fifth and the final component of Langchain called agents and tools. Okay, so this is where it gets really interesting. Imagine basically giving your AI the ability to actually use tools and make decisions like an actual human being, right? So if that excites you, we're going to be exploring that in the next section. So I'll see you there.